This is the Ford Puma, Top Gear's car of the year. It's cheap to run, lovely to look at, and absolutely great to drive. So you can imagine our delight when we heard that it was to get a bigger brother. And here it is, the Cougar. Let's deal with the facts first. It was designed in Europe, but it's built in America. It's available with a 2-litre engine or a 2.5-litre V6. However, if it wants to be number one, it has to be this. This, of course, is the brand-new 3-litre Alfa Romeo GTV6. It's my favourite coupe of them all. It is pricey, I'll admit, but it looks fantastic. And it goes like stink, and um, that badge is a bit more of a bird puller, I think, than the Blue Oval. Still, the Ford is not a bad looker, thanks to some sublime detailing. Whoever designed this car put some real effort into it. There's the space in the back. There's actually more in the Cougar than you get in most coupes, which is nice, but not terribly important. I don't even care that it's got a pretty colossal boot. You see, if I want something useful, I'll buy a washing up bowl. I don't care either that underneath this angular new edge body, you find the Cougar is basically a tartan up Mondeo. I don't care because there's nothing wrong with the Mondeo. The top of the range ST24 is one of the most underrated saloons that money can buy. It's huge fun to drive. And as a result, so is this. As this has the ST24's engine, you've got a nice choice, really. The Mondeo if you want four seats, or this if you want to look good. Mind you, they have made some mild mechanical changes to make this feel a bit more sporty. The pedals are perfectly positioned for heel and toe gear changes, and the driving position, well, I just can't think of any car that gets it better. At the right time and in the right place, this thing absolutely flies. The grip is just amazing, and the feedback coming through the steering wheel is brilliant. The V6 engine's an absolute barnstormer as well. There's a sort of muted roar Ooh, when you get to the top of the rev range. Cougar. They should have called it the Ford. Big Angry Lion. The trouble is, it isn't actually all that fast. With just 168 brake horsepower, the top speed is only 137. And 0 to 60 takes a ponderous eight seconds. Meet a GTV6 at the lights and he'll gobble you up without even noticing. So, let's have a think then. The Alpha is faster and better looking, but the Ford is considerably cheaper and more practical. It's anybody's game. And it doesn't help when you come inside either. The Cougar's dash may feature one, two, three, four, five, six different types of plastic and therefore be messier than a monkey's breakfast. But it has the sort of toys that Alpha Man can only dream about. Traction control, air conditioning, trip computer, CD. It's got the lot. You get big, comfy seats too, but I wish they had more side support. And I wish there was a clutch footrest too, because this isn't a cruiser. It's an out and out sports car. It is a worthy big brother to the Puma, 
It's much better than the old Probe. It's a dream to drive, and yet it comes with real-world fuel and insurance bills. Great. But is it better than the Alpha? I have to make a decision here on two counts. Which car do I most want to drive home tonight? Well, that's the Alpha. And which one do I most want to own for a year? Well, if you've got any common sense at all, you'll take the Ford. But if you've got any common sense, you won't buy a cramped, expensive coupe. You'll buy a nice saloon. But I don't want a nice saloon. I want the Alpha. Ford gets close, but not close enough. <laughs> <laughs>